stuff and find find my own stuff that I like. So, you know, I listen to shit like Fiona Apple, which I wouldn't listen to now. And uh, <laughs> fucking the Fugees. I'm just naming shit off the top of my head. I don't even know how many, how many groups and people I listen to. Bloodhound Gang. Yeah, I really like them back in the day. You and me both. They are local, so I got to show love for the Bloodhound Gang. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, I actually, I saw them, like, live opening a show for, I want to say it was The Urge and The Real Big Fish or something. I don't even know, I don't know why I was at that show, but <laughs> I was not that much into Real Big Fish or anything, but I was there, and, like, they opened, and I was like, what the hell is this? I like this. <laughs> yeah, and I think right after that alternative rock fucking... Bloodhound Gang era. It was like 97. Oh, and, then, and then I discovered the clowns. And my life changed. <laughs> <laughs> the clowns changed yeah, your life. Kind of, but, but kind of. They're, they're, they're fun stuff. Oh, yes. And then, yeah, and to this day, it's like, yeah, that's still... I own the, the pretty much the entire shit. Like, I don't have a catalog day for the past couple of years. I, I don't have the most recent stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I, the rest of my CDs, um, I search for cocaine. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> most of it, most of no, it you... maybe I'm lying. You'll never know. But I, I actually did pawn off, like, a lot of my CDs. I saved a fucking, a death tone CD, a garbage CD. That's just really no, ironic. Because, I mean, doesn't uh, the Deftones have a song called White Pony about cocaine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, That's um, ridiculous. That, and I think there's... What else do I have in it? Well, then, of course, I can't forget Mike Fantastic and Comatose. I mean, Mike Fantastic, he's just, you know, one of my sources of inspiration because he's a wacky dude. And Comatose has spent a little bit more time in my CD player than I care to admit because he's my arch nemesis. He's our arch nemesis, huh? Yep. Everybody's got to have one in this world. I mean, let's be honest. Without an arch nemesis, your life just sucks. Mm. <laughs> You're just yep. like, who am I going to fight on the daily? I must defend my honor to somebody. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> no arch nemesis. See, you people got to learn. Yeah, it's always fun to have one of those. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, you know, we, we do it. We have, we have fun. Over there, cutthroat, and we put together some good stuff. But yeah, that fucking Sam Rocha. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> he just he just gets under my skin. I don't like it. He gets under your skins. <laughs> yeah, like those uh, scarabs in that movie, The Mummy. They just crawl right under there and eat your eyes out and shit. Pretty much. They're like oh. pretty much, and I'm Kilo Crack Rocks, and that's that can be irritating. Yeah, Kilo don't play, huh? <laughs> Kilo don't play that. <laughs> yep. All right, so uh, what's your no, favorite? No, they're great. They're great, both of them. Love them. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. So what's your favorite venue to play? Hmm? Well, um, you know, I have actually only played two places in my life. Okay. Um, I played... We have played, we played a lot of shows at The Hideout, which is this small little, like, bar. It's got a little stage area, and they, they host a lot of, a lot of local stuff. And, uh, we do shows there, but it's like, we're never, you know, they don't bring, they usually don't bring any, like, any big names or anything. It's usually all local acts. So it's not like, you know, you get a whole lot of new people coming in there to hear your stuff. Yeah. Um, the only mm. other place we have played here in Omaha is Sokol. And that is where Mike Fantastic and myself opened um, the the ADK show during his April Fool's tour or whatever. We opened that show and that was just, it was a lot more fun because yeah. it was a huge crowd. It wasn't like it sometimes at the other place we played ends up being just like a bunch of people we know. And that kind of thing. So this is like a whole new, whole new crowd of people that were exposed to us, and they were like, and they really liked it. So that was awesome. And it's like got a you know bigger stage, bigger, it's higher off the ground than it's a smaller place. So that's neat. There you go. 
If you are in Omaha, go check out Kilo Crack Rocks. For the fucking two people in Omaha, definitely. (laughs) Travel from outside of Omaha. Make them feel special. Buy their CDs. (laughs) Even if you don't have enough gas money to get home. I swear, one day we're going to have quality video footage of a performance. Like, yes. I think there's actually a Mike Fantastic one roaming around somewhere on the uh, Cutthroat website, but there's not really any good Kilo Crack Rock footage mm. yet. But it's coming. We need so more Kilo. So we'll have to look forward to on YouTube or CutthroatMusic.com or something. Someday soon. Damn. We need some really good fucking goddamn Kilo Crack Rocks footage. Fuck. I know. We and you know, there, there is a YouTube clip of one show we did at the hideout that was back in April, and that was just, um, we had a perform for probably six months, it was Mike Fantastic and I together, sharing a set or whatever, Aww. and it performed for a while, and it was just, it seemed like it went well at the time, we got really positive feedback and everything, but looking back on it now, yeah. and the few other performances we've done after that, it's like, it's, you can tell we've come a very, very long way there since you go. that particular April show. But that's the only YouTube clip floating around out there, so we just look like fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> you're like, you, you deep down now, you're like, we've gotten a lot better, but there's no evidence. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> you're like, God damn it! <laughs> yeah. but, uh, oh, man. So, uh, what's your top five favorite horror movies? Alright, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Um, I, okay, top five favorite horror movies. Let's see. I don't, I'm not going to put these in any particular order. Um, I think I'm going to go with classic horror movie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's in there. Um, the, another one that I like. Last House on the Left, but the thing is, I have not seen the original of that. But I really do like the new version. Yeah. Um, and then I guess I've got to say House of a Thousand Corpses, because that's something newer, and it's fun. Because honestly, I think a lot of like the old horror movies are really... Sometimes they're just hard to watch. Like They, they kind of drag out. They, they don't have the, the good quality and that kind of stuff. And... I don't know, so I like some newer stuff, um, and plus, like, um, I don't know, um, shit like Halloween, the Halloween movies and Jason, honestly, I'm not, I don't really, eh. <laughs> they're not, they're, they're, they're boring to me, yeah. um, mm. <laughs> but let me see, hold on, how many was that, that was, that was number three, yeah. number four, I don't know if this would really be considered a horror movie, but kind of, maybe. Um, Stephen King's The Mist, also kind of, I think that's kind of newer, but that has a little twist at the end where I'm like, wow, that's pretty fucked, I like that. Oh, and number, okay, number one, and this, I think people laugh at me for this because nobody is fucking scared of this movie. I think it has a PG-13 rating, perhaps, even. But this is the only movie to ever fucking creep me out. The Ring. Really? Yeah. The Ring? Really? <laughs> really? Really? Um, yeah. That video tape is fucking disturbing. Like, usually, you know, I kind of like horror movies where it's like, it, wow, that could happen, you know, that could, like, you know, of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, there, I mean, there's like some fucking weirdos that live in the woods. I guess and they'll I mean, fucking eat you and shit. I guess you could like get one of those videotapes. And, and they didn't like survive and make 25 sequels either. Like, yeah. you know, that was it. And it's just, it's fucking disturbing. Like, I don't know. 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 I don
you know, usually I think shit like that is scarier, like stuff that could be real, but for some reason, the ring, the images in that videotape, the possibility, I just, I do not like it. It does not sit well with me. Well, and, I mean, let uh, me ask you this. Do you have a videotape player, like a VHS player? <laughs> No. Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I mean, let's just keep it a hundred percent real. I mean, unless somebody's good at like burning DVDs or whatever the fuck you know, and actually takes yeah. the time to make like an evil DVD for you, I mean, <laughs> what are the possibilities of this? I mean, if, if you have I a just, VHS I player, think, hypothetically, I, I mean, it shouldn't you be dead? Of course, I can watch it. I'm going to say, too, it was the first few times that I thought I had never seen anything like that. Like, there's, not, I mean, now there's all those, like, like, there are all those shitty movies right after that that were kind of like the ring and they sucked. Oh, yeah. And, but that was Sorry. the first time I had seen anything like that. It doesn't creep me out anymore, but the first few times I watched it, <laughs> I stayed up at night like, ugh. Oh, Lord. You stayed up at night convulsing back and forth. You're like, oh, no. The girl's going to yes. come out. Don't fall asleep with the TV it's on. <laughs> but, you know, well, I think, you know, the movies that I think are really terrifying, though, like horror movies, I'm like, okay, the blood and gore is, that's always fun. But yeah. the movies that I think are really fucking terrifying, I have not watched them since yeah. I was a kid, but they gave me nightmares. I, I watched, like, I watched Nightmare on Elm Street when I was, like, uh -huh. four years old, and I was like, hmm, all right, good night. But no, the movies that gave me nightmares, yeah. The Dark Crystal, The Labyrinth, Through the Looking Glass, and, well, that's probably... That's all I can think of right off the top so, of my head. So, did you have, like, nightmares of David movie. Bowie killing you or something, or what? <laughs> no, I just don't like those... <laughs> I don't like those creatures. They shouldn't be interacting with the human race. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying. Especially if you're a small child and you're like, oh, what if that thing is like going to take me in my sleep? And you don't know what's on their mind. They're not human. You don't know what they're thinking. Like yeah. in their fucking disgusting vulture head. They're going to do sick things to you. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, he's so, going yeah. up. So, uh, um, yeah. But yeah, that would be my top five for, um, and then my really, that, my really terrifying movies that aren't in the horror genre, but I think they're scary nonetheless. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're certainly a new, unique one, Miss Crack Rocks, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the disaster movies, though, that's, that's my thing. I love disaster movies. Yeah. As corny as they are and as unrealistic as they maybe sometimes, <laughs> I love them. Yeah, disaster movies somehow always make people, like, who hate each other have sex or, you know, just have some <laughs> crazy random adventure where they end up getting, like, married afterwards if the world doesn't end or they die yeah. together somehow yeah. or, you know, it, it's just, it's always a very wholesome movie somehow. <laughs> I know. It's strange. I'm all about wholesome. Yes, wholesomeness, wholesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of wholesomeness, if you could kill three celebrities, who would they be and why? Oh, oh. Um, this is going to be a hard one to narrow down to because, you know, when I was younger, I actually had a list of people to kill that, that mainly consisted of celebrities. <laughs> And there were 200, and I want to say, like, 223 people on it or something. 223 um, I, I was annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm. um, okay, first and foremost, celebrity I would kill. The fucking sparkly vampire dude. Yes! Uh, the Twilight dude, Robert Pattinson, is it, I think? Yeah, I heard he was actually like a, um, what was it, a homeschooled kid that they randomly picked out of it or something. Really? Yeah, because my one friend Morgan, she went to the same homeschool as that guy went to or whatever. Not went to, you know, you're fucking at home, but, you know, yeah. you know I mean, use the same fucking program or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, but, yeah, he was definitely... He would definitely top my list because, you know, for no other reason than 
He plays a vampire that sparkles for fuck's sake, and he has 